Shalom, I give all and the glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakudash, like you double on this to our apostles and elders, great millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Aki and pushing his word out across the four corners of the earth. And as of today, which is December 25th, 2020, which is a worldly holiday known as Christmas. So you have a lot of people gathering together and thinking that they are celebrating the birth of the Messiah, or they would say the birth of Christ. You have a lot of our people included and engulfed to that madness as well. So by definition, Christmas really means death of the Messiah or death of Christ. So in the World Book Encyclopedia, it defines Christmas as follows. The word Christmas comes from Christes Messi, which is spelled C-R-I-S-T-E-S-M-A-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Which is an early English phrase that means Mass of Christ. It is interesting to note that the word Mass, which is spelled M A S S, as used by the Roman Catholics, has traditionally been rejected by the so called Protestants, such as Lutherans, Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, and so on. The word Mass is strictly a Catholic word, and thus so is Christmas. And that shows you the hypocrisy of these false denominations, because as of today, those same different denominations that I mentioned, they all come together on December 25th as a great homecoming, and they embrace this Christmas or Christmas. And according to religious usage, means a death sacrifice. So you have millions upon millions of people around the world saying Merry Christmas, but in actuality, they're saying Merry Death of the Messiah or Christ, which is a mocking. Okay, so on page 537 of the Catholic Encyclopedia, and it says this, In the Christian law, the supreme sacrifice is that of the Mass. It goes on to say, The supreme act of worship consists essentially in an offering of a worthy victim to God. The offering made by a proper person as a priest the destruction of the victim. Please note carefully the word victim of the mass. The Latin word for victim is hostia, which is spelled H-O-S-T-I-A, from which the word host is derived, H-O-S-T. The mass, by definition of those who coined the word, is a sacrifice involving a victim. So the word mass comes from the Latin root mitere, which is spelled M-I-T-T-E-R-E. -E. And that means to send. And it derives from Missa, which is spelled M-I-S-S-A. -S and that means to dismiss. So in other words, these people around the world, when they say Merry Christmas, they are merely dismissing their Jesus as Christ. On page 110 of a book entitled The Mass in Slow Motion, we find the following words. It is only with the consecration that the sacrifice of the mass is achieved. I have represented the mass to you more than once as a kind of ritual dance. So in totality, the mass is the ceremonial slaying of the Messiah over and over again. And it's followed by the eating of his flesh and the drinking of his blood. That's why the mass is called the death sacrifice and the host is the victim. So that's exactly why you see the people in the world today are in that merry, joyous, celebratory spirit because they are all partaking into a death sacrifice. Whether they know it directly or indirectly, you're still putting your energy source into a wicked holiday. And this is an official Roman Catholic doctrine. And what do you have that come out of the Roman Catholic Church? All these false denominations. And Christianity is definitely a part of that. So Christmas is really a witch's Sabbath called the Yule. Now we know through the spirit that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, told us as the Israelites in the book of Exodus, the 23rd chapter, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Whenever you see the world or constantly run into something, being involved into a matter, that's when you know you should step back and go the opposite way. Just look how this whole world right now are embracing this wicked holiday. 
And you have also the majority of our people included in there as well. Alright, so Saturnalia was an ancient Roman festival in honor of the god Saturn. Held on December 17th of the Julian calendar and later expanded with festivities through to December the 23rd. Cronus is an alias for Tammuz. Tammuz was Nirai reborn alias, his son. His wife and mother, Rhea, which is called Semiramis, Egyptian and Babylonian antiquities recognize his mother as Semiramis, and his birthday is celebrated on December 25th. The first recorded date of Christmas being celebrated on December 25th was in 336, during the time of the Roman Emperor Constantine. He was the first Christian Roman Emperor. In other words, he was a so-called black man that was caught up into these pagan customs, and he incorporated those wicked philosophies into the scriptures. That's why it's stated in the book of Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, learn not the way to heathen. Because two-thirds of our people are spiritually likened unto these other nations. Therefore, that's why they are called heathens. As it says in Romans, the ninth chapter, and the sixth verse, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Yes, they come from the physical stock of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So they are physical Israelites, but mentally or spiritually, they are likened unto these other nations because they are fallen after the vain deceits and the rudiments of this world. They are not in tune with the true ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So therefore, they are called heathens. And it says, a few years later, Pope Julius I officially declared that the birth of the Messiah, or Jesus, will be celebrated on December 25th. So as you see through the Spirit, that our people have been spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit. At the tradition of men, according to the book of Colossians, the second chapter and the eighth verse. So you're going to see a pretty good documentary going to the symbolisms and just the true origin of this wicked holiday known as Christmas. And Lord willing, you all be edified by this. Shalom. Today in Vatican City, they're holding a celebration of the birth of the Roman Catholic Sun Child. The first thing I find interesting is that they've actually placed the depiction directly underneath the Star of Ishtar, the Eastern Star of the Mystery Religions. If that isn't blatant enough, you can see that the star is being propped up by an Egyptian obelisk. So straight off, you can see that this is a counterfeit copy, a mirror of the real thing. Then, of course, you've got this giant cabalistic tree and also accompanied by other ancient symbology that should make it absolutely clear that this represents the birth of the sun god of the Babylonian mystery schools. of the Immaculate Conception that took place just a day before this festival is simply a code 
for the birth of the Antichrist, or the ripping of the dimensional veil. And I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. Contessa Lene Tu Non Lus è per me un onore, è dal 1982 che San Giovanni Paolo II, permettetemi di congratulare a nome di tutti, alla città del Vaticano e ai fedeli di tutto il mondo, questo grande albero dei nostri amici di Malta. Questo albero proviene dai boschi di una delle tante valli del Trentino. So here I am back in Vatican City. It's about 11 o'clock at night. So I decided to come back and investigate uh, some more of the symbology. And the point of making these videos is really to warn Catholics, um, which I want to do more, you know, because there are real Christians in the Catholic Church who are deceived and this is maybe one of the ways that can help break the brainwashing the fact that there is hidden agendas going on and it's not worth getting too deep into that because it's not deep this is the the, the things of this world and the things of the enemy are not the deep things, the truly deep things are what it's copying. The truly deep things are the things of God and why do you think they keep constantly mirroring and copying and inverting these things to, because it's, it's a religion that is actually at its very heart with the Jesuit conspiracies uh, at the top levels and secret societies. They're trying to break the veil and bring through the Antichrist, uh, like we see in the book of Revelation. It's code for Revelation 9, the Immaculate Conception. Don't forget when you look at this from above, we're actually in this cradle right now. This circular shape is like a cradle. So don't you think it's ironic that they have the birth of the false Christ in the middle of this cradle, cradle of filth, cup of filth, you know, abominations, the things that are exposed about this area, cradle of filth, think about it. And this, this whole thing here that I'm standing on is a clock the sundial 
So this is a representation of time. Cracking through time. Through the veil of time and space. So we're in the middle of a sundial and we've got the birth of the Antichrist cracking through time. Um, what does that tell you? It's that false Hegelian battle of light and dark that they use. Lucifer defeating the dragon. And it's all a counterfeit of the real Christ. They're just copying and mirroring and using this as a masquerade. So as I was saying, there's always two sides of the same coin and there's a hidden hidden side and a side that's in view, esoteric and exoteric. So the public are told that this is about Malta and a vicar going to Malta. But I ask you, you see the, the big Maltese cross, which is essentially the Jesuits and the Knights of Malta and all that. But my question to you, as we know that there's some hidden sides to this, do you think that this is representing the disclosure, the black pope, the vicar of Christ, heralding the birth of Nimrod, the Antichrist? And remember, the obelisk represents an antennae, so harvesting energy for the conjuring up of this and uh, you know this has been the the ultimate goal all through these many many centuries and centuries since Babylon the ultimate goal has been to do this piercing the firmament the Tower of Babel we shall be like God This is the ultimate goal of the mystery schools. So what you're seeing here is a masquerade as Christianity. And that obelisk represents the uh, phallic with the circumcision of ancient Egypt. Because this is all part of the ancient mystery schools of Babylon. It goes back to Babylon and Egypt. What does the Bible tell us about those? I'm sorry to say, but there's really nothing else to it. This, this whole place is a giant keyhole. Freemasonry, Illuminati, Enlightenment, all of that. Essentially Gnostic religion, which is, and, and Babylon, which is clearly against God, clearly against Christ, Antichrist. This is the fundamental truth to what all of this is representing and leading towards and I just ask you you know if you truly love God get out of it while you can because there is massive deception coming
because we don't celebrate the ancient pagan festival of Saturnalia. Beware! Beware! 